guys, welcome to that new toy smell here on Pop Culture Network. That new toy smell? Yeah, that new toy smell, because we're talking about toys, right? Isn't that how it works? No? Oh, I thought we were going back to that. I thought we were bringing it back. No, you won't let it go. Oh, I see. Hey guys, welcome to the show here on Pop Culture Network. And today we've got actually some review sample toys that we're going to be looking at today. Yeah. Which is amazing, considering uh, it's been a while since we've done any toys. Yeah, it's gotten a, a little uh, hard to do a bunch of toy reviews uh, recently. Hard? Hard. It's, it's, it's gotten difficult. Yeah, it's been a really tough time for us. Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's that, uh, I, I had that thing with yeah. the guy. There was the one thing with the guy. We did and, that. Um, yeah. And then I had that, well, I mean, there was that one day. That I just had a bunch of stuff. Oh, and you had to pay that bill that... I did. I did. I had to... In fact, at one time I was standing in line at the checkout account at the grocery store and I had to text him to send me money by PayPal because oh, I didn't have any money at all to buy groceries. you had to eat that one time. Yeah. And that, so, yeah, totally. I mean, it took just, all the time. Woo! <laughs> I mean, that was just Monday. So. <laughs> yeah, no, guys. I mean, like, honestly, we've got stuff piled up that we have been wanting to do yep. videos on. And part of the thing was, like we said, this summer, we were going to be moving into a new building. So we're going to set up a studio. We're going to have a dedicated spot for doing the show, mm -hmm. a dedicated spot for doing these reviews. We'd have the equipment set up and ready to go. So it'd be quick and easy to get in there and film the stuff and get it out and have a lot more content. And then, uh, like, the guy sent us a lease and it had a whole bunch more money on it that he wanted. And we, Yeah, we've been in negotiations with uh, several different locations now for the last... I don't know, two months, and finally, probably even longer than that, and we finally... Oh, uh, it was like July or Well, June. it's been a long process, let's just say that, but we found a spot, we actually have an agreement, and uh, we are hopefully by December 1st moving into this location. Woo! And we're going to have our studio in there, and hopefully, if we get the keys and we can get in there, like, we might do a couple shows, like, while we're moving stuff in, so you can kind of see the transformation of the place. And so I, that could be kind of fun. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm going to try to record, uh, I'm going to do some recording of the actual sh store as it sits now, and then when we get over there, I'm going to record sections as I'm moving in, and then let you guys take a look at the whole new store, and all its amazing glory. It's not going to be that great. But <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be but it'll, be a, it'll be a nice 30 second video package. Yeah, on it'll, the, it'll, be, the it'll be a bigger location. I mean... We're, we're going to go about two and a half times bigger than our current location, so that should be um, good for us. So Plus, uh, moonshine party room in the back. Party room? VIP room. With moonshine? With moonshine. It's not the champagne room, it's the shine room. Huh. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a hillbilly hipster, in case you didn't know. <laughs> That's how it works nowadays. Duck Dynasty it's, in the house. It's not about Pabst Blue Ribbon and like hating movies that are popular. It's liking Duck Dynasty and growing a beard. And drinking shine. And drinking moonshine. Okay. Corn whiskey. All right. So anyway, uh, they sent us review samples of stuff that we're going to take a look. Now, this has been out for a while, uh, but for whatever reason, they sent us a review sample of it out of the blue. Uh, so this is the Creo Star Trek Transporter Trouble playset. This comes with Scotty and a Klingon and a Transporter. So we'll play around with that. We'll actually build this and play with it and okay. do, do the worst uh, celebrity impersonation voices that we can possibly muster. <laughs> we'll do that. Why not? <laughs> that. A, yeah. And then from uh, Tomy, we have this uh, Pokemon uh, Battle Arena playset. Po Pokemon XY. Yeah. Like, my son actually wants this thing, so I'm going to steal it after the show and take it to him. It does things. Hold on. It's coming. It's coming. I don't know if they can even hear that because it's kind of quiet in the box there. It's completely but, underwhelming. But if you've, seen the, if you've seen the WWE spinner belts that do like the entrance themes and the stuff, it's that same type technology there. Yeah, so. I don't know if it's stuck like on a demo mode. It's just it's really underwhelming. But so, we'll see. anyway, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna crack these open. We're gonna do some neat stuff here on the show. And uh, if you're lucky, I might even let a silent but deadly squeak out, and you can watch his face turn blue. That'd be a good time. No, it's, no, it's not. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's definitely not. It's a good time. Hey guys, now we're going to check this out. This is a Creo playset here. This is from the uh, Star Trek movie line from Creo. Now, of course, from Creo, you have known the you have the Transformer stuff going on. They have the battleship thing uh, going through. And then they started this new Star Trek stuff uh, most recently. So this set here is the Transporter Trouble. 
and it, it features two figures. It's going to be a Klingon and it's going to have Scotty in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up real quick and then we're going to take a quick look at the set and uh, see uh, what it's all about. It's only about 50, what, 65 pieces, so it should only take a couple minutes. All right, so in the box we have, of course, the instructions, which are obviously important. We're going to need those. We have a sticker sheet. Looks kind of... Uh, I think they just took photos of the movie and just stuck them on the sheets here. So um, we got two figure bags, um, which is awesome that they do this because it's just, I mean, if you just want the figure and you don't care about the set, you can pull the guys out really easy. And then we have two bags. We have a big bag and a small bag with some like castle style pieces here from the L word that we won't use. Now we're all done. How'd it feel? Wow. Okay, so this is only 65 pieces, but this has got to be super complicated. And I'll tell you why. There's these stickers on here, you know, that you have to line up. You get the sticker sheet that I showed you earlier, and you have to line up the stickers on the way they're going to uh, fit onto these platforms when you put them in. However, they're inverted halfway through, so one sticker goes this way, and one goes this way uh, on, the, on the piece there. And on the back of them, you have the same, which don't matter, they're all the same image, so it's not a big deal. But on this image, it uh, looks like some kind of background to, you know, probably some place in the movie, whatever, some planet. And uh, they don't line up correctly, even though the instruction says this is the correct order. It's a little off, a little weird. So that was the most complicated part about this, placing the stickers and trying to make sense of them. Uh, otherwise, it was pretty straightforward uh, build on this little transporter okay and so let me just go ahead and simulate what we're going to do here <laughs> so inside the transporter you stick the little figure on the little blue thing here at least I assume this is where he goes and there's like a little latch that you turn that spins them around <laughs> and when you do it there's like a little light right here uh, on the base, so let's see if you can see it when I turn it. That lights up as he's spinning. <laughs> and it's coming apart. And so, out of the transporter, in the transporter, out. Where's that in? I don't know. Out. So, so okay. one side is down on the planet, the other side is in the Enterprise. See, now he's in the Enterprise. That's why the panels look different right. on that side. Okay. So, yeah, all right. That makes and now sense. he's down so on the planet. planet. So obviously you don't, want to, you don't want to face this way, you want to face this there way. There you go. There you go. All right. So, oh, uh, beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> oh, there was a problem. But we got we to... lost him, Captain. Oh, yeah. That is Scotty. And then, uh, that's the sign pick. Okay, so. Well, what's the other side look like? Anyways. Whoa. And on this side, you have him inside the transporter room. Make sense? There you go. Now obviously, this is a... Okay, so, in the transporter room... <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, the problem with, with the Creo figures, and this is my only complaint about them, because they're kind of cool, is that they have the, you know, their legs can, you know, split this way. <laughs> unlike, you know, Lego figures. And that causes a lot of problem when you're trying to stick them on things because normally the figures are stationary and they won't move, but when you try to set it on the object and try to stick them in the little, the little points there, they just kind of like spread on you. And then you get this crazy leg action. Now it's good for the figure itself, gives it all kinds of cool, you know, articulation and ability to move around, but, you know, you can see how this is a little complicated to get on this little tiny platform here. Just so. It, you know, it doesn't fit very well. Basically, you have to force it on there. Do you think it looks like Simon Pegg? 
Uh, no, I do not. There's no likeness to uh, Scotty Young. Can you okay. take the Klingon's helmet off and see his real face? And his arm fell off. Okay. Uh, and so, and this, you get the Klingon in this one with his little. Uh, <laughs> is there a name for that? <laughs> yeah, blade? there is a name for it. I don't know it. And, Worf uh, had one. Yeah, so no, his, his mask is, is his head. It's attached to the figure itself, and, it, and it's one solid piece, so it's not coming off. So there you go, you got the, the Klingon and uh, Scotty without an arm. With an arm now. And, like I said, oh no, we're on the planet! And, oh, we're safe! Or it's... Let's get to the planet. So, and then of course you have a little figure stand, which are a little better for placing these figures than that little pedestal that you're supposed to somehow stick this figure on. And generally, this is how I keep all mine because I don't really care usually about these little sets so much. So I put them all on the little uh, figure stands and there you go. Just like you get out of the little blind packs. How does it compare to the box? So, how does it compare to the box? Good question, guy. Uh, so the likeness on the box and the actual finished project is pretty much the same. This is obviously a computer render of the build. Um, and I mean, this is it basically. Although, you know, you would think this little glass piece here is going to be all blue and nice and shiny. And it's, it looks like it's all foggy and it kind of looks like they took one of those old, uh, CD plastic tube cases and cut it. You know how those are really foggy? Same kind of plastic. So, you know, this should only take you about 10 minutes to do. Uh, the stickers are probably going to take you another 10 minutes. And, and to try to figure out the lineup will take you another 10 minutes. So you got about a 30-minute build, which should be, a, you know, a 10-minute build, depending on your skill level. Mine's not that great. So there you go. This is Creo Star Trek Transporter Trouble. All right, guys. We are back with the Pokemon Battle Arena. This is from Tomy. And this is new for Pokemon X and Y. Uh, let's see here. Basically, this is an electronic battle arena where you take your two different figures and you make them go head to head. And the electronic screen here will play out uh, the different effects so you can watch the battle happen. Basically, it's set up with the Pokemon Coliseum in the middle. You've got your battle platforms here for your different Pokemon. You've got your uh, action buttons there. Up here, there's a gallery, basically. You can take your different Pokemon figures you're not playing with at the moment, and you can set them in the stands so they can watch what's going on. And then all the new figures that you buy nowadays come with these little uh, cards that say what type of attack. Fire attack, water attack, uh, grass type attack, because you might want a grassy attack. So anyway, you can take those and put them in here so you can tell which types are facing off against each other. They have these shields. Um, on the back, it tells you all the different types there are. And apparently, you're supposed to somehow set this down on the table and have like the other Pokemons uh, that you use in your gang, your Pokemon gang, your street gang of Pokemans. Uh, you hide them back there so that they don't know what type you have ahead of time, I guess. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. It's whatever. Uh, so you've got that set up there. There's one for your uh, your buddy, too. And you take your Pokemon, and there are basically two ways of playing. Uh, besides the fact that there's one player, you versus the computer, or two player, you versus a friend, they also have a quick play mode and a battle mode. In the quick play mode, you just kind of uh, attach your figures in here, and uh, it'll give you a countdown a timer on the clock. And, uh, what was that? It sounded like a camera taking a picture. Weird. Um, it, it'll count down, and you do what's called a tug-of-war, where you basically just start pounding on the buttons, and you're trying to move the thing uh, towards you, in, or away from you. I'm not exactly sure how it works. And then you push your guy forward to attack. And then once you initiate your attack, you'll see it move across the board, and when it gets to the other side, if it's coming at you, you pull back at just the right time in order to try to block the attack. Uh, so you'll take less damage. Now that's in quick play mode. In the real battle mode, you actually maneuver this little disc around, and you slide it, uh, 
sideways, forward, backwards, twist it, whatever, going through the 17 different types trying to find the type that you have because it will actually keep track if you've got a water type and it takes an attack from the electric, then it takes more damage. Uh, I guess that how, that's how it works. So you've got that paper, rock, scissors aspect of the different uh, Pokemon types against each other. So like I said, there's 17 different ones, so it can get a little uh, time-consuming trying to maneuver it, because you really only have forward, back, and then you turn it sideways, forward and back, and that's what's going to make it switch to another two that you can do forward and back, or switch it sideways, switch to another two to go forward and back. So depending on which one you're trying to get to, you might be uh, fiddling with that for quite a while before you get to your battle types. Um, but as far as the game goes, it, it says that you pound those in order to play this tug of war to try to pull your attacks or push your attacks. I'm not exactly sure how it works because we tried it for several minutes and it really didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference one way or another what we were doing. It just kind of... After a while you could do an attack and if you attacked last time you couldn't attack this time. I'm not exactly sure um, how that works. But anyway, as far as the build goes of, of it, since this is something you're going to be smacking on, uh, it is actually pretty well... Uh, constructed. It's pretty solid. Um, even this battle piece snaps into place back here in the back of the Colosseum. Your Pokemon figures are in these uh, spring-loaded holders and it's designed this way so you can use whatever toys you have. So like my son has a ton of Pokemon sitting around at home and so he can just take Pokemon he already has and put them in there and then there you go. He would just select what type it was. Now because this is X and Y uh, these are some of the new characters that they have. So let's see here. This is Chespin, is the little green guy. We've got Finnekin, is this little uh, puppy dog looking thing. And then we've got Froki, which is the little blue frog. So those are your three X and Y Pokemon that come with the set. So I think uh, that the sound is kind of hard to pick up on camera to get it right because of the motors and everything, but we're going to try uh, to position the camera and kind of get an overhead view on this so you can see the images down on the screen and maybe get some of that sound, and maybe I can uh, try to beat Killen, but when we were playing uh, before this, trying to get the game down, he beat me four to nothing uh, on this game. So apparently, I cannot catch any of them at all. Yeah! Here it comes. Here it comes. You should have seen me showing up. All right, you ready? Yeah, what are we doing? Oh, boom! Gotcha. Ha oh. <laughs> ha, blocked it. What? It took less damage. What are you all, what are you all set up for? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He's a frog, he jumps. <laughs> oh yeah, well my guy's a grass type. Here we go. Not earth type, we go. not land type, he's grass type. Here we go. Oh, boom! Oh, got me good. Yoink. Oh, that's painful. Oh. Hmm. Here we go. What am I gonna do? Two. What am I gonna do? One. Oh, boom! Oh! It helps if you go forward and then backwards for whatever reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh. Ah, Game. Oh. It don't matter. You're done next oh. trip anyways. You already lost this game. This is over for you. Well, one extra round, you should have. Ah. It's a little shaky, but it's fine. It's getting there. I don't think my guy's shooting. I don't know what the problem is. What if I turn him sideways? You lose. Goodbye. You don't matter. You're done. Oh, You're yeah. Done. It's going. Goodbye. Fireworks. Woo! Woo! 
get the girl. I get the girl. Yeah. <laughs> what does the fox say? All right. So now that we've done that, let's play for wedding rings. Because I'm really good. I'm playing for wedding rings? <laughs> Five <laughs> one. <laughs> if you Unless lose, you full battle mode. You got, you got a lot to explain later. <coughs> Alright. So pick your pick your water type. Looks like the Death Star. Water, there you go. Alright, and I'm grass. Alright, you ready? So oh, I think that I just got cheated. Woo! Splash! Zoink! Keeping fro hickey here from falling. Ah! Oh! Timing is perfect. Timing is perfect. What? Oh! I still did. Apparently, my grass does a lot of damage to your water type. Yeah, surprising. I'm gonna kick your grass. Yeah. I don't even know how to time against that. <laughs> oh! What is that? First time you've ever won, so it'll, ne it'll never again say P2 win. So you know, have your moment. Yeah. Although you set me up by picking me Although, you pick water. All right. Here's here's what I'm starting to think. In in Pokemon, they always like take turns. Like it's one person's turn and the other person's turn. So it shows an arrow. So I think when we do the back and forth, it's how strong your attack is. Like I'm trying to weaken your attack. And you're trying to make your attack stronger by doing that tug of war. And then you attack. I can't attack. That's why it never works for me. It's like we have to go back and forth, taking turns, how strong it's going to be, and then trying to block. So it's like you can't attack every time. You have to take an attack. I have to take an attack. We go back and forth. But we're fighting to see how strong that attack is. Seems like the to, player to it. it seems like the first one to go first is always going to win that battle, generally. I, I was player two though, and I just won. This guy's right. I think the paint came off your frog. That's so weird. Okay. We got some paint rub already on the thing. Because we're getting too out of hand. Well, there we go. So, this is the battle. This, this it, it takes, I, I don't know why it I twists, have no though. Idea, yeah, no idea what this does. Why that happens, it doesn't even say. The instructions are extremely vague. But it does say go to the Tommy's website for more videos, and you probably need to watch a video on YouTube. Not this one, because we clearly don't know what we're doing. I, I also noticed that they've got like, you know, eight different languages on the uh, instructions here. But on part of the English, it suddenly flips to another language in the middle. So it goes, Battlefield goes from green, four to five points, to yellow, Regris Para Balahala, two to three points. Like, I don't know what Badahala is, but that's one of the other languages, uh, oh, okay. I'm assuming. Well, that's good so, to know. Thanks. So Thanks. there you go. You clear so, that up. So it's a, little, it's a little weird when you're trying to get through it. So, hmm. anyway. There you go. All right, so we haven't done the show in a while. Some time has passed since we've done the last few episodes. What? So, so here's the question I want to ask you. Now that there's been more time passing and now that the holidays are approaching... Have, has your opinion changed at all at PS4 and Xbox One? Or do you feel like you might pick one of the systems up? Do you feel any more compelled to get one? Or any more compelled to get like a uh, the Shield Android system or anything like Steam Box or anything like that that you're looking forward to? Um, actually, no. It, you know what's funny about this is that uh, I honestly feel if you wanted a PS4 or the Xbox One, you kind of already had to commit to that a couple months ago when the pre-orders were out there because, as far as I could tell, every place that has them for pre-order, they're gone. They're like they're not, they're not available anymore. Mm. So if you didn't decide you wanted one of those about four or five months ago, you're probably out of luck. 
unless you want to go to eBay and pay the crazy rates, which I'm sure this year will be no exception. Um, I personally, I don't know. I, I'm not going to buy this new system because I, I'm still, I have a lot of value left in my PS3 still, in my 360. I have a million games I still need to play. Um, I'm, I'm kind of happy these newer systems are coming out because it's going to kind of take a little bit of a price uh, reduction on the, what's out there currently and I can pick up some more stuff cheaper. Um, I'm happy with my PS3 and my my uh, 360. The games are good. They look good on my TV. They're fun. Um, I think maybe they're just a slightly ahead of the where they need to be right now as far as the next generation of gaming and I, I just can't spend you know $500 on a new system right now. I mean hell I even bought the, the Wii U you know, and I kind of want to play that, <laughs> but I still don't want to spend two, you know, three hundred bucks on a system. I just, I just don't. Not yet. Yeah. The other thing I, I was thinking about was I have so many games on Steam. I might buy a Steam box just to have it on the TV with a controller, because I have so many games I bought on Steam because they do all those uh, humble bundle uh, type things where you get like a dozen games for six bucks. You know, so now I've got like the Batman Arkham City and Arkham Asylum and Fear 2 and Fear 3. And and the other day, I was even looking through Steam. They had games on sale for Halloween, all scary games. And I saw a game and I was like, oh, I'd kind of like to play that. Maybe I'll buy that. And I clicked on the thing and it's like, you already own this. Like, this is already in your library. I'm like, oh, crap, I already own this game. I had no idea. Yeah. Because I've got, like, 60 games in my Steam library because I keep buying those bundles. That's the same. I, but I think I'm more around 120 games now in my library. And uh, games I haven't even thought about playing yet. And But the thing about the Steam box is I don't really have... Uh, not too many of the games that I own would, I don't think, translate well for me on a controller. Like, a lot of shooting games that I have, I, I prefer using a mouse and keyboard. So, versus the controller, I'm a lot more uh, faster and more accurate. Well, why not just get like a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse there? Uh, what, what's the point of that? I'm sitting for my computer anyways. I'm well, you can get a giant screen TV. Do you have a 52-inch computer monitor? No, but I don't want to well, spend 100 bucks or whatever the 200 bucks the Steam box is going to cost just to do what I can already do. So, I'm not on board with that. Yeah, but you got to keep your computer open. You can't game on your computer because you have to edit the video for all the shows that we do on the Pop Culture Network. No, man. When that thing's editing itself, <laughs> I'm playing games, and when I'm done, I'll go back and edit. So, I got two screens, dual screen. Yeah, so do I. You got to have that. So, what else? What else? What else? What else? Are you still buying trading cards? No, actually, I stopped. I, <laughs> I, and you know what's funny is I took all the uh, trading cards to uh, the Toy Man show, uh, local toy show in St. Louis area, and um, I just took pretty much just all trading cards, filled an eight foot table as many as I could fit on there, and you know sold them anywhere from a dollar to three dollars a pack, and I sold you know probably three hundred dollars worth of trading cards, which you know doesn't seem like a lot, but considering they're only a dollar, one, two, or three dollars, that's a lot of trading cards, and. Uh, so it gave me hope through that testing market that I, I should be, you know, bringing those back to the store and sell them and have no problems. And there are people that come in the store right now who are asking me, hey, where's the training cards? Uh, I put all of them in storage since we're about to move. I just decided not to bring them back out. Um, so, yeah, I think once we get over to the new facility and I set up the training cards, I will probably add some to the mix every so often and uh, keep certain ones that are low on stock uh, restocked. I'm beginning to think, though, that you could do an entire store of just the Big Bang Theory mini mesits. Because <laughs> mini those things have been flying out the door. So Funko does blind box mini figures, and we, uh, we've we had several, you know, DC, uh, we had Domo DC, um, there was the, uh, we just recently got Nightmare Before Christmas blind bag minis, of course, uh, about six ninety five for per, uh, and there's Walking Dead that sold really well for us. Oh yeah, those sold, yeah. Uh, so we got the Big Bang Theory, which had been out for a little while, and I finally got some in the store, but I guess I didn't realize how popular Big Bang Theory really is to just random people. And people have just been buying them up left and right. We opened a case and within less than a week we're down to like uh, less than 10 of them now. And that's pretty good. And, and it's a lot of people buying multiples. Like not, it, it doesn't seem like the per transaction is just like one figure. Like it is with a lot of the other ones. Like the DC Domos, they would just buy one. Because you don't know if you're getting like Shazam or Batman, so it could be cool, it could suck, whatever. But with Big Bang Theory, they're just like, oh, I'm going to buy three. I'm going to buy four. You know, it's like people just buying a bunch of them to open them up because everybody's trying to get Raj, I guess. That's the big one. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I like the shows. It's good. I just, I'm not into it. So, it's not a big uh, nerd thing for me. It's just, it's so weird because the box that you get these things in, you, you open the box and then, like, the figure inside is, like, tiny. Yeah. Like, these, these blind like box inch figure. Funko figures. And I'd probably buy more of them if there was some sort of cheat. Like, if they had, like, uh, UPCs. Or stamped numbers, like some of the other blind bag stuff, like the G.I. Joe and Transformer Creos. You can look them up and you know which one you're buying. If they would do that on some of those, I might buy more of them because I kind of like the little figures. But for them being blind box, it's like I don't want extras because I don't trade with anybody. Like, I don't have a group of Funko traders in town to be like, Hey, I got three Sheldons in the Green Lantern shirt. Can you trade me for a Leonard? You know what I mean? <laughs> So, is there? There's got to be a website for that. I'm sure there is somewhere, but I just don't do all that stuff by mail. But anyway. FuckoMiniTrading.com? Although there's a bunch of Lego mini traders. Uh, in fact, uh, our boy Nick Ochoa, is, he got me the sex robot Lego. Oh, really? So I'm finally getting one of the sex robots. See, I just buy it. I just go to eBay and buy the ones I need. I'm missing right now. I, I have a... It's funny that you said this, the Lego minifigures, because I recently been going through my garage trying to find stuff. Um... That I want to sell, you know, for Christmas time and get rid of things I don't need. And I have in my garage right now a sealed case of Series One. Oh. And I'm talking a master case that would have two cases in it. So it's actually two full cases sealed in a master sealed box. And I was looking on eBay the other day, and I, I purposely bought extra cases of these minifigures to throw away or put in my garage. Throw away. <laughs> and it, well, if it's not in my hands, it's in the garbage. <laughs> and uh, I, I knew that. You know, maybe one day this Lego minifigure thing will take off and it'll be worth a lot of money. So I looked on eBay to see how much one of these master cases are selling for. Well, wait, first, before you say that, how much did they cost when they came out? When they came out, I think I spent, I want to say $140 for this case. For the master case? For the master case. Okay. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I can't remember if that was per the case. So it might be times two, or I'm not sure if that was for the one because it's been so long. Um, and that, and right now, uh, as a re this recording is going on, uh, beginning of November, I looked to see what they were selling for for that master case. They are about fourteen hundred dollars. Whoa! So, yikes! And that's those are the prices that they have sold for, not what they're asking for. That's the selling price of the last you know four or five that have sold. So I have one of those. I have one series two, and I'm pretty sure I have a series three sealed case somewhere. Um, so, are you gonna sell it? Yeah. I think so. I, like, I, I don't imagine it's going to go higher than that. If it does, it would be slight. I, I just can't see it going beyond that value. Um, so, and, Although that would help with the new store, with signage and yeah, the paint and the some construction. Some would sell off some stuff. And, and it, but I was also trying to gauge maybe if I sold sets of Series 1, would that be worth more? And would they sell better because it would be a lower price point? I don't know. <clears throat> but so as, the, as far as the minifigures go, I, I think I'm missing s Series 9 and Series 10. I don't have any, I have like a couple randoms, but I don't have the sets. So I have to remember to go back and order those sets because if I don't. They'll be more expensive. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. What's good cool? talk. What's good cool? talk. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do talk about a lot of this stuff on Pop Culture Network Radio, which I do every Friday. We talk toys, comics, video games, and wrestling because I opened it up. I said, what do you guys want to talk about? And it was like, Facebook, wrestling, on our message board, wrestling, on Twitter. People were like, talk about wrestling. So we started talking about wrestling again on Pop Culture Network Radio. So make sure you check that out every Friday night. Or Pop Culture Wrestling Radio. No, we did that one before. But this isn't just wrestling. Oh, okay. We talk about other stuff. Who, who's, so, who's we? Who's we? We is uh, the Pop Culture Network. Oh, okay. The, because this is this is not dirt radio. This is pop culture network radio. So this is the full <laughs> oh. force oh, I forgot. and authority of the pop culture network. Back in podcast. Uh, what's the show called again? Pop culture network radio. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> it's legit. So yeah. Um, so uh, what's the plans? So we're moving. New That's, building. It's going on. We're going to try to film a little more often for you guys. I know that a lot of you have been wondering where the shows have been. Um, Problem is, we have a problem with trying to figure out what we're doing for the show, and this format doesn't necessarily feel right yet. So there might be some changes to that. 
And well, because also we we want to have that set built, and there yeah. there are a couple things that we'd like to do. If we're doing like a weekly show or a bi-weekly show, there are regular segments you can do. Like we used to do on VG Losers, we would talk about the upcoming video game releases. Like I'd kind of like to talk about some of that stuff again. Like mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily go through the entire list, but some of the key stuff coming out, because I think that is interesting to go through uh, a bunch of that stuff. But you can't really do that on a show that you're doing, you know, randomly like once a month. You know, or once every three months, whatever this show is. Like, you have to have more of a regular format. And that's, and also, like, with toy releases, talking about some of the new Maddie reveals, like, every time they go to a con, they reveal some new stuff. And it might be nice to talk about some of those characters and some of those figures coming out. But, again, you, you have to kind of do the show on a regular basis. And that's why I want that set where we can just go in and sit down and film and boom, and there it is. And I also want a green screen. You really <laughs> I really want green you screen. You really want green screen. So you can wear a green shirt and get disappeared. That's right. a floating head. Uh, I've done that before. Yeah, of, course good time. Yeah, of course you have. I had the green mask. Of course you have. So uh, that's the plans. We're moving. We're getting stuff going. And we will be uh, moving faster and better and more content by the 2014 year. And hopefully from there we'll try to do some bigger, better things. You know, I know we promised a lot of stuff. What's going to happen. <laughs> what's going down. But it, it really all revolved around the moving of this location and it's taken forever to get out of here and find a place and now we have so that being if we said, ever get the keys yeah that being said once we get over there a lot of these promises we gave you guys and the things we want to do can actually happen you know clearly in here we, i mean look at us we're, we're crammed in a hallway <laughs> right now basically but but being in this hallway if you want the generation x white queen figure from Toy Biz. Uh, we do have this available for $8. You can go to shoppcn.com. Act now, and you'll get no extra discount, and you'll pay no extra price. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good deal. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. We're glad we had you here today. We appreciate it. We love you. You're the best. <laughs> You're my favorite. You right there. Not you, but you right there. You, my favorite. You go, girl. That's right. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, you can find us at popculturenetwork.com. Also, you can come to the message boards, the official message boards of the Pop Culture Network. But we don't call them message boards. We call it a forum because you come to jointheforums.com. And that's the official spot you're going to find all of us and all the great people that we hang out with just chatting it up all day. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Just search out Pop Culture Network and like us there. A lot of good conversation going on there. You can also find us on Google Plus at, what's the name it's of that one? Pop Culture Network 1. Okay. Real easy to find. You can just search Pop Culture Network. You'll find it there as well. And don't forget to check us out on Twitter for all the random updates that we have uh, during the week with uh, new shows and new things that we have going on. <laughs> so you can find that at Pop Culture Net. Net. It's Pop at Pop Culture Net. Net. I don't use Twitter that much. I'm sorry. You're the one who tweets everything on our website. Uh, yeah, well, yes, but I don't use it. Oh, <laughs> I see. You just tweet through it. I you tweet don't through it. I don't use it. Also, you can call our 24-hour voicemail line, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's area code 217-953-4025. You can leave a voicemail message, and it'll record up to 10 minutes. Although, if you want us to use it in some format, try to keep it like maybe 20 seconds. I mean, the 10-minute voice messages you guys leave are fantastic. Uh, but, you know, we, it's, you can't really use them for anything. But thanks for leaving them. Yeah, we appreciate it. And also, you can come see us live in person at our store. Currently, as of today, <laughs> we're still in our uh, 1021 Junction Circle, Springfield, Illinois location. But sometime in December, we'll be over at our new location, and I'll give you the address when we move there because it's, I don't remember it off top Is that the Yard Shopping Center? It's the Yard Shopping Center. Or is it's that the Chatham Square? It's about a block away, the Yard Shopping Center. Okay. So it's only about a block, two blocks away from where we are currently, so it's not like it's going to be that hard to find. But we are here Monday through Saturday, so you can come check us out and see us in person and check out all the great stuff you see behind us. And if you want to buy any of this great stuff like this... Batman crime scene evidence. And you, uh, the and you Dark don't want to come here physically. You can go to shoppcn.com and pick this bad boy up. At shoppcn.com, we have taken the uh, old format away, and now it goes directly to our eBay site 
until we replace that site. Um, so from there, you can see everything we have. We have over 100,000 items listed on there, and you can uh, go crazy town. It's Christmas coming up, so... Basically, all the crap in this store we put online in, in the online store. So every comic book, every action figure, every video game, all 20 billion DVDs are on the website. So anything you're looking for, if we've got it, it's going to be there. And I know you're saying... Wow, that seems like that takes forever to do. Yes, yes, it does. It, yes, does. it, does. it really sucks. So please uh, help contribute and buy my stuff. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys next time.